The place I'm heading to today is by far the most difficult place I have ever landed an airplane, ever. It's called Ibai. It's actually on the side of a mountain. It's got about an 80 foot cliff at the end, on actually both ends. One going up, one going down. And it's located, I think, at like 6,200 feet. So there's definitely some elements that make this place very difficult. One of those being the wind. It's kind of in a bowl, so it swirls around. So at the bottom of the runway, the wind shows one way. At the top of the runway, it's completely opposite most times. And because it's situated at 6,200 feet, your ground speed is much faster. It's only a 12 minute flight out there, so I'm at my almost max gross weight. So my approach speed is gonna be the fastest, like 74 knots. But because my touchdown zone is like a nine to 10% slope, I have to add three to four knots on top of my approach speed to be able to basically match the slope before I flare, otherwise you just pancake into the ground. So I'm waiting on the weather right now. It's just on the other side of these mountains right over here, 12 minutes away. So when I get the okay to go, we're out of here on a 12 minute flight has finally cleared up at Ibai. It's now 10.30 in the morning, but I just got a text five minutes ago that it is clear, ing, and no wind. So let's go. Our fuel on, igniters, ox pump, low start. This plane has been starting really slow lately, I feel, even with the battery pack. is coming up awfully slow. I'm really keeping an eye on my ITT and it's, yeah, 678 for a first start of the day. That's pretty warm. All right, here is my weight and balance. I've got 590 pounds of fuel, so a little bit more than I need, but not much more than I need. I have no seats on board. My two pods underneath are full up at 131 and 123. And then the rest of it, which is, uh, I don't know, 450 or so kgs, with a couple drums of fuel and some other stuff in the back, some batteries and stuff. So right here in the middle, so we're good to go. I've also got three seats on board way in the back. So I think I'm picking up four people um, out of there. All right, 6,800 pounds. So 61 and 72, 72 for landing, 61 for rotate to 8,000 at the most today. Grokka Tower, good morning. November Tango Echo request, taxi I buy, one POB. November Tango Echo, Grokka Tower. Uh, confirm you submit a flight plan. A affirmative this morning I did, but um, it was for departing at 8 a.m. Uh, could you please go at details? One POB for I buy outbound track 240 below 8000 and estimate the time in route is 13. November, I think we go. Roger. Uh, taxi 2 runway 17 left at uh, the backtrack and line up. Wind uh, north easterly at uh, 7 knots. QNX 1020. Time check uh, 34. The traffic inbound Alpha November Hotel Foca 100 from Mosby. Goroka estimate 39. Copy inbound traffic 39 one, 1020. Click backtrack lineup 17 left. No November Tango Echo. Goroka down all stations. Goroka 1187 Alpha November Hotel. We now uh, 19 miles from Goroka Visual. On descent through 11000. Tracking for 3 mile panels runway 35 left. All right, well, I either get out of here quick or I have to wait on here for another five or 10 minutes till he gets in. Alpha November Hotel, Kruk Tower, uh, conditions previously advised. Uh, track uh, for final, report final, 35 left. Alpha November Hotel, Kruk Tower. And then November Tango Echo, I expect a uh, short delay for flight plan processing, uh, one minute. No, good plan, Echo. We'll be ready uh, for departure on lineup and when you're ready. No, I think I'll go. No, I think I'll go runway 17 left. Right then, cliff takeoff. 17 left, right turn, cliff takeoff. No, I think I'll go. All right, cleared for takeoff, ignition condition, flaps 20, fuel and harnesses. Checklist is complete. Let's go.
Air speed is alive. I can feel the density altitude today. <laughs> it's so warm. There's a rotate. There's 740 on the ITT. Like I was telling you earlier, we're just heading over two mountain ranges right over through here. So we'll go through the call call gap, pretty low clouds through there, one more mountain range, and then it's on the other side of that. We're up and over 300 feet, we'll go 10 degrees of flaps. Over 90, we'll go zero. A little bit more back trim though, and bring our prop on back to 2000 RPM. We'll just leave it there for the rest of the flight. Go over the strip chart in just one minute with you guys so you guys can see what I'm expecting out there, got a little bit of what it looks like and how the slope is. So basically anytime you land on a hill, you can't just like come in and then just land like normal. You actually have to match the slope before you flare. And like I was saying earlier, you actually have to add some speed to your approach speed to allow you to be able to round out to that and then flare even more. So instead of just going from here to here, you're kind of going here to here. And that's why you have to add extra. Broke Tower, November Tango, Echo departed 41, tracking 240 below 8,000. I by 54. November Tango, Echo below 8,000. 15 miles, contact Mosby, 120, decimal 1, HF6598. One two zero one six five nine eight at one five. No, but thank you. All right, one two zero one or six five nine eight on our HF radio, just as a secondary backup in case we can't get them on HF or VHF. I mean, hey, it looks like the first gap here is going to be clear. There's definitely some clouds on the other side of that that are actually lower. I've got two options. I can head off to the right or I can head off to the left. Being off to the right, we've got a little bit of higher terrain and it's a little bit shorter. If I go to the left, a little bit further, but the train kind of drops off, and as I'm getting closer, then I'll just determine what my best option is. I typically go to the right, but I'm seeing a lot more blue off to the left, so I don't know yet. But we'll just level off here around 7,000. That should get us there, because I mean, we're only nine minutes out. I can see the ridge line over there. That's typically kind of where I go. Clouds are fairly close to the ridge tops. I could also go this way. Wind's coming this way, so only five knots. I think I'm gonna choose to go this way because it looks like the path of least resistance today. So we're gonna go that way. It'll give me a little bit more time and space to be thinking about entering into the circuit, things like that, rather than worrying about clouds all the way up until I get up into the circuit. Air torque back to 1250, get some right rudder pressure out of there because we just had a climb. Throw our autopilot on for now. All right, arrival. Make sure it's eye by, it's a one way airstrip landing on runway 23, so we'll set that up in just a minute. Our missed approach is basically at the river, base, kind of mid final, shortly after crossing the river. Winds can be strong by 10 a.m., it's 10.45 in the morning. He said there was no wind. Strips conditions report is required the day of the flight. They said it rained last night, it's wet, but it's not, but it's drained off. You can see down here the profile. Touchdown is between 9 and 10 percent. My approach speed right now is 72 knots. I'm going to go ahead and add 3 knots to that. So anything over 7 knots, so 7, 8, 9, that's 3 knots. Maybe even four, but I'm going to go with three and kind of get a baseline for maybe next time. Because I have only gone in here once since I've been back from home assignment from the States. I haven't even taken you guys in here in probably like a year and a half. There is a drone shot. Like I was saying, there's a drop off at the end of it. And then the up, the upside of it is just a steep, another 80 feet going straight up nearly. So it really throws your visual cues off. It's That's really what makes this place difficult is the fact that it just throws everything off. There's autopilot off. We'll go around this corner. It looks like we can squeeze through maybe a set of clouds and get into the next valley where we will 
you can see here, kind of goes around the light area. We'll follow up the valley and then enter into the circuit. Their OBS, runway 230. There we go. What that does is it puts a line on my screen, so at any time, even if there's clouds in the circuit, I can just look at my screen and go, okay, that's the orientation of the runway. Our fuel is on, our TAWS is off. Our VREF has been set up at 75 knots. Our lights and inlet are completed. Our go around is mid to short final, well, mid final on this because I'm heavy today. Power up 20 degrees flaps. Pitch for 12 degrees on the attitude indicator and a hard left hand turnout resetting our ITT to 740 for the go around. We want to be turning final 6850. So I'm actually going to set up my minimums like you would an instrument approach because I tend to get low on this one. And the reason being is because the valley just drops completely out from under you, so all your visual cues are all messed up. But if you put it in on your minimums, and then you, it yells at you going minimums, minimums, before you turn final, then you know you need to just hold your altitude until you turn. Borsby 6598, November Tango Echo. Moresby 6598, November Tango Echo, No Joy, 1201, currently 17 miles to the west of Garoka, below 9000, estimating I by time 54. November Tango Echo, not about 9000, May Police Traffic, Air 218 to 1007. 1007, November Tango Echo. All stations, I by Kodiak, November Tango Echo, one zero miles to the east, 7,000. Peace overhead circuit, I by 5-4. Prop and harness, we'll get harnesses last. We'll get prop once we get a little bit closer. All right, 7,300 feet is pattern altitude. I don't think I can even go up to that because it looks like the clouds are sitting right on the ridge top. So I'm gonna stay at my 7,100 feet until I get down to my 6,800 feet. Turning final right out here. Morsby 6598, November Tango Echo, end the circuit I by report after landing. November Tango Echo. All stations I by 1201, November Tango Echo, end the circuit I by. Hop and harness, we'll get, we'll get landing clearance after we get on the ground to cancel our SAR watch, which is our search and rescue, and our geared flaps. Just now entering into the circuit. Looks like I'm gonna go a little bit lower even to get over top of these ridges. Winds up here, four knots from that direction. Turning final, these clouds potentially might be in my way, because I'm basically at my turning final nearly about 100 feet high. All right, there is the field. Winds are still really calm, but now they're coming from this direction. Go up and around this hill. So prop and harness is done. 20 degrees of flaps. All right, if I need to go around, power up. Minimums, minimums. There we go, hold my altitude from here. Power up, 20 degrees of flaps. It's for 12, left hand turn out, reset ITT. We're gonna turn base at this hill. 85 knots here on base. 75 final. Full flaps, checklist is complete, turning final. And by the shaded area. Crossway. Seventy-five 
Ascents are good. Coming up uncommitted. Ends are good. Uncommitted. A little bit slippery. Always exciting, even for me, after how many times I've been in here. Moresby 65, 9 or 8, November Tango Echo, on the ground, I by cancel SAR. November Tango Echo, I by how it's terminated. Yeah. November, I come. All right, he's saying it's a little bit soft in here, so I'm just going to turn around right here, if I can. Yeah, All right, well, if you enjoyed that, give it a thumbs up. Go check out some other videos. See if I can link a video to some on-the-ground content that I post on my Patreon page, and I'll make it free for you guys. So you guys go see kind of the content you can expect on Patreon. So, thank you guys for watching that very short little flight. And I uh, hope to see you guys on another flight. I've got a lot of them to go check it out. Thank you.